Thank you. And I'd just like to thank Fred for asking me to launch her book, which I take as an signal honour. Mm -hmm. Twenty years ago, I bought, with my own money mind, a small but exquisitely formed book of poetry called Things in a Glass Box from the Five Islands New Press Poet Series. Today, I am pleased to be launching another, even smaller, even more exquisitely formed book of poetry, this time from the Flying Islands Pocketbook Series. Beth's writing has island hopped, you might say, to China. Joining in Kit Kellen's Pocketbook Adventures, and part of the promise of this book is the extra, prospective, almost secret pleasure the translation offers to both the Chinese and the English-speaking reader. I can only envy those who can read every page of the book in either language. What a sea of possibilities must open up to them. Fortunately, even for an inadequate monolinguist, Beth's work is exploration enough. Things in a Glass Box, Beth's first book, has on the cover an image that is half mysterious object and I realise now, looking at the right-hand pages of this book, half picture book. This image sums up perfectly the collecting, feeling world inside the book, so that even when, shamefully but predictably, I did not actually open this book for a number of years, mm. whenever I saw it mentioned or caught sight of it on the shelf while searching or purging my collection, the image flashed the poetry out of me again, to do, yet again, the thing. Because that's what memorable poetry does, isn't it? The thing. And however minutely it is described, uh, not by me, obviously, it amounts to no more or less than that. It was, in this case, the same thing that Joseph Cornell does, or Marcel Duchamp in his travelling box. And it wasn't and isn't the same thing that any other poet does. Beth's book survived many purges, so it was no surprise to me that when I became reacquainted with it and acquainted with Beth, thanks to the glorious internets, I immediately thought of the things in the glass box, and with the same result as ever. When I found out about her last book, Vagabondage, I immediately knew it would do the same thing, because the very idea of it did, and this is the marvel of it, the idea of living in a caravan and moving around, writing about what arises from within and without, from now and before, is quite enough. And if you add to that actually living in a caravan and moving about and writing about what arises from within and without, from now and before, the riches just pile up. As Roy and H.G. might say, too much caravan is never enough. <laughs> this little distillation we launched today flashes time and time over, I think, with Beth's determination that yes, here's a lived and remembered life unreservedly felt, but it's felt through art. As Beckett didn't say, ever tried ever felt, no matter. Try again. Feel again. Feel better. So when at the start of the Museum of Fire she quotes Peter Tyndall, a person looks at a work of art, someone looks at something, it is an aha moment that lasts the whole book through. Because like Tyndall, Beth's statement is always true, always the same, and yet infinitely variable. Looking back in this book, as 20 years of art and evocation flow by, seen through the glass of a display case, a caravan window, or a train window, or even, you might think, through best glasses, we see everything, as she does, with a cautious, cautionary gaze, a gaze that demurs, deprecates, celebrates, and moves on, always moves on. There is something wonderfully historical about this book, furnished by its modern, elegant lines. No museums now like the museums in this book, the noise
points from the espresso machines and the compulsory interaction drown out the quavering thoughts of the poet. Even the most up-to-date monist, monstrous Winnebago is at heart a little plywood caravan. Even because we all seem to look inwards, into screens, into ourselves nowadays, the insistence on simply looking out of a window or even just at the window being there. And my mother sits by a window knitting. The garment multiplies, thick and soft between her fingers. And Gertrude Stein has Alice Topless say, I like a view, but I like to sit with my back turned to it. Thanks to Flying Island, the view extends into Asia. And the right hand pages extend an invitation to imagine other ways of saying, or simply to imagine, with no further education, Beth's words flowing across the page in either direction, in a multiple, continuous caravan survey. And when you shut the book and look at the cover, it's all very simple. Beth Spencer is a work of art. <laughs> Beth Spencer looks at something. I give you 